anyway, I'm making this video because of this bowl right here. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are going to tell me what I did wrong. Uh, I already know what I did wrong. I turned it too fast. I turned it absolutely too fast. And I knew better when I did it. Uh, but, you know, sometimes, I guess you'd say, uh, better judgment doesn't, uh, doesn't prevail. But uh, I had this mounted in this chuck and uh, was turning around 2200 RPM. I, I remember looking down at the speed readout. This lady's got a digital readout. Uh, I was in third gear, as I like to call it. It's actually no, no gears in this lathe. It's uh, three uh, belt steps, just like on this smaller lathe here that has the, you know, the four pulley positions. Uh, this lathe has three different speed ranges, and it's uh, infinitely variable in between those ranges. But anyway, I was in the highest speed range, uh, running about... Uh, probably 60% of maximum speed in that range, which was 2200 RPM, uh, 2220. I think it was running about 23 maybe. Uh, I was standing with the bowl mounted just like this. I was standing right here, running in reverse with a full sheet of sandpaper, working, you know, just working the contour of the bowl on the outside. Uh, I had been running at that speed about three minutes, three or four minutes. Uh, now, the day before this same bowl, uh, I cranked it up to 2,500 RPM and left it there for two hours. Uh, walked away from the lathe and, and left it just to sling water, you know, to, to help dry it. Uh, this this uh, blank was so wet it was, you know, you can see the, the streak of where the water hit the wall here from, from spinning it. Uh, and I figured it, it had held 2,500 RPM for two hours the day before. Uh, it shouldn't have any problem holding 2,200 RPM, you know, after it had dried and lost a considerable amount of weight. Uh, but anyway, to the point of this video, I was standing right here, running in reverse, standing on top of the bowl, and I thought to myself that I probably needed to stand to the side of the turning as fast as it was turning. Uh, common sense told me, uh, hey Bubba, you don't need to be standing directly in line with this turning. Uh, but common sense did not prevail. Uh, I had gone to, I believe I may have been only at 150 grit now that I think about it. Uh, let me see, I've got the paper here that I was using. You see it, it actually ripped the end of the sheet off when it exploded. I was only on 100 grit, I'm sorry, I thought I was on a higher grit. I was only on 100 grit. But anyway, to the point of this video, it's a reminder that accidents can happen and a wood lathe can hurt you, can hurt you bad. Uh, if you notice, I'm having to lean on stuff a lot when I, when I stand here. Uh, like I said, I was running in reverse about 22, 2300 RPM, standing, you know, I was down here humming me, whistling me a little tune, just just to go on at it, you know, and uh, I don't really know if it exploded first and then came off the chuck uh, or came off the chuck and then exploded, but looking looking at the way the damage on the bowl is and uh, you can see the where the jaws of the chuck were, I think uh, the bowl separated, I call, I call it exploded. Uh, I think the bowl exploded from centripetal, centripetal force uh, before it came off the chuck. When it came off, uh, I think it was this piece uh, hit me. It would have hit me. I think the flat side hit me because I've got a, a bruise. Let's see if I can get in the camera view here good. I've got a bruise that runs right across there that's it was real deep. You could see it within five minutes of this happening. Uh, now I'm black from here to here, from here all the way down to here. All the important parts down there too, the parts that uh, uh, you need if you want kids, uh, are black. They are not purple, not red, not blue. They are black as coal, black 
from bruising. Um, I went to the hospital thinking I had some severe internal injuries. Uh, it hit me, when it hit me, it hit me so hard, it knocked me back. I don't remember if it knocked me down or if I just went to my knees from the sheer pain of it hitting me. I don't remember. I was kind of in shock. Uh, I mean, I, I had good mind that it could happen. I was well aware of the fact that I was spinning too fast. I was well aware of the fact that if you spin too fast, your turning can come off and can come apart. Uh, it was really well balanced. To be green wood, it was balanced extremely well. I got a little too comfortable and cranked the speed on up, trying to hurry up and get it finished so we could get that thing shipped on Monday morning uh, to a good friend of my dad. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to make this video as a reminder to all the other wood turners out there. Don't get complacent. Uh, as I like to say, learn your lesson from somebody that, did, that, that learns a little harder than you do. Uh, I tend to learn my lessons the hard way, and I try to... <laughs> it hurts to laugh. <laughs> mm. I, I like for people to learn from my experiences, because uh, I hate to see people learn the hard way like I do. Uh, <laughs> oh. But uh, guys, I've, I've had a severe motorcycle wreck uh, 10 years ago. I've seen more injuries than most people will ever see. Uh, I was, you know, my life was touch and go for many months, not just days or, or hours. My life was touch and go for almost a year. Uh, I have shattered bones and it's all in this one wreck. Uh, so what I'm trying to get at is I have been through some painful events. I, my body has experienced some serious trauma in the past. And I can tell you, when this thing hit me, it ranked up there with pain I felt before from that motorcycle wreck. Uh, it, like I said, I don't recall, I don't remember if it dropped me to my knees or, or I mean, if, if I dropped to my knees from the pain of it or if it knocked me down. Uh, it, I was kind of in shock when it happened. Uh, it took me a, probably a minute to really realize what had happened. Uh, my wife said she heard it. I know a piece of it hit the wall back here, and she said it sounded like a car had hit the house. She said uh, she didn't know what happened when she heard the noise, but then she heard me hollering. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I went to screaming like a little girl because it scared, it scared me. It honestly, I knew when it hit me that it hit me hard enough to do severe damage. Uh, like I said, I've, I've been through some serious accidents in the past, or a serious accident in the past, and uh, I know that the force that this thing imparted into my body when it hit me was enough to do some serious damage. Uh, my sister is a registered nurse, so I called her. Uh, I don't have a great insurance plan, uh, so I was a little apprehensive to just head to the emergency room, so I called her to come look at me first. Uh, she saw all the bruising. I uh, got here about an hour after it happened, and uh, the bruising was quite pronounced uh, at, one, at the one hour mark, and she suggested that I go ahead and go. Uh, Turned out I didn't need to go to the emergency room, but I went ahead and went on down to the emergency room. It was probably about 2 in the morning by the time I got down there. Uh, they did an x-ray. Uh, the doctor originally thought that my pelvis was broken uh, when he looked at the x-ray. Uh, uh, but uh, he did ask me if I had any previous injuries because he couldn't tell if the injury was old or new. And I told him, yes, that uh, about 10 years ago I did break my pelvis in, uh, in a previous accident. And he said, well, then in that case he wanted to do a CAT scan because he also saw some fluid. Uh, long story short, uh, they did a CAT scan, and I've got some minor internal bleeding. He said it's nothing that needed to be repaired. Uh, they want me to, you know, I've already been back to the doctor once. So I'll go back again tomorrow. Uh, today is, is Tuesday, uh, December the 18th. And this happened uh, Sunday, December 16th. Uh, I'll go back tomorrow to see the doctor and make sure that the uh, internal bleeding has, has checked itself and everything is okay. But uh, uh, 
I just, like I said, I wanted to, I'm, I'm one of the kind of guys that I, I look at safety as a common sense kind of thing. You know, I don't believe that uh, you should have a thousand different safety devices to make make this machine idiot proof. Uh, I believe that uh, common sense should prevail, and I typically allow that to happen. I just I didn't do it this time, uh, and I want to show this to uh, other wood turners, possibly novice wood turners, that uh, aren't aware of the energy that is put into an object when it's spinning at those speeds. Uh, I did the math. Uh, I'm actually a numbers kind of guy. Uh, at the, the current diameter of this bowl, the speed it was running at, the rim of this bowl had a surface speed. Now keep in mind, we're talking about RPM versus surface speed. The rim of this bowl had a surface speed of 130 miles an hour. Uh, now, of course, from the center out, you go from zero miles per hour of, of linear speed all the way out to 130. When this bowl came apart, excuse me, when this bowl came apart, I figured the piece that hit me, I honestly don't know if it was this piece or this piece. Uh, going by the amount of it bruising and injuries, it, it was probably the heavier piece that hit me. Uh, but... Uh, According to the math, the, the rough math I did, this piece hit me doing somewhere around 100 miles an hour. Uh, now I haven't weighed it. Weighs about three, maybe four pounds. It's still got some good bit of moisture in it, so it's not real light. Uh, but even if it was this piece that hit me, it was it weighs at least a pound. Uh, a pound doesn't sound like that much weight, uh, but a one I forget how many uh, foot pounds of energy that could impart at 100 miles an hour. Uh, but anyway, I just I want to let folks know, hey, I got lucky. Uh, I'm, I'm hurting. I'm gonna be. I, I'll miss an entire week of work. They won't let me go back to work until after uh, New Year's. Uh, so I'll miss this whole week of work. That's you know seven hundred dollars I'll lose there. Uh, and I just I I can't stand up long without leaning on something. I'm in severe pain from here to here. Uh, you know, and I got lucky. If this had hit me in the head, it very well could have killed me. Uh, just a couple years ago, I forget the date, it may be as much as 10 years ago, there was a woman killed uh, two counties over from where I live here, and I live in Lauderdale County, Tennessee, uh, Ripley, Ripley, Tennessee, if anybody's familiar with the area. I forget the woman's name, uh, but she was, uh, she was fatally injured uh, by a turning on a wood lathe in Memphis, Tennessee, which is about an hour away. Uh, I go to Memphis on a fairly regular basis. I didn't know the woman. Uh, didn't find out about it until I had my accident. I just did a little reading on injuries per year and deaths per year from wood lays, And I was a little surprised uh, at, at the research that I did. Uh, there's around three deaths per year in North America, that's including Mexico and Canada, I believe is my what my numbers were, what I read, you know, what I was coming up with. Around three deaths per year on wood lake. Now, you say three deaths per year, that's not a lot of people. But when you figure that into the number of wood turners we got, uh, I say, you know, the number of folks in North America that are familiar with wood lathes and do wood turning, uh, that's a very large percentage. Uh, I mean, you know, versus, say, you know, deaths of some other hobby type activity. Uh, so, like I said, I've been turning since I was five years old. I'm 32 now. Uh, I have never had anything come off of the lathe due to separation. I've had, uh, when I was younger, I was bad about not tightening my tail stock up. Uh, so I had, you know, two or three spindles come off running around, you know, 800, 1000 RPM. You know, they danced around on top of the lathe and scared me a little and I learned my lesson to keep my tail stock tight. Uh, my sister, who's three years older than I, uh, it was actually on my setup. I set the lathe up for her uh, and she started turning a spindle and it came off and hit her in the chest, bruised her, uh, but you know she was fine, everything was okay, everybody was all right. Like I said, I've, I've had a few turnings come out of the you know centers, come, come off between you know the uh, live spur and and uh, and uh, live center, but or not live spur. I'm sorry, forgive me. Uh, so 
So, I mean, I, I'm aware of the fact that, that uh, turnings can uh, come off the lathe. Uh, I'm aware of the fact that they can come off violently. Uh, I am aware of the fact that a turning can separate. I've just never had it happen to me until Sunday. So, I guess I'm just making this video uh, for one to, to get the get the news out there. Uh, hey, I got hurt, but I'm okay. Uh, I learned my lesson. I will never, uh, I will never turn a, a turning that large that fast again. And like I say, common sense told me I shouldn't be doing it. I knew that it was dangerous when I did it. I knew I shouldn't be doing it, but time versus safety. I let time win, and I'll show a little. I don't want to get indecent and lose my good standing. Uh, this is just where we're Now, of course, this is scar scarring from my previous injuries, but uh, you see a little bit of bruising here. Well, I can't show I can't show anything else than bruising from here down. Uh, so anyway. Uh, just want to get the video out and let you guys know, hey, this stuff can hurt you. It can kill you. Uh, there are recorded deaths of wood lathes uh, fatally injuring their their uh, the folks that were that were making the turning. So have fun. Be safe. By all means, have fun. Uh, uh, like I said, I don't believe in having a hundred different safety devices on on a tool. I believe in and using your common sense, and I, I, I mean, it didn't didn't work for me this time because I didn't let common sense prevail. Uh, I know by putting this video out there, I'm gonna have 103,000 people tell me about how stupid it was, and uh, I'm willing to accept that. Uh, I can tell every one of you how stupid it was for me to be turning a ball this large uh, that fast. It's it was stupid. I learned my lesson. I learned it the hard way. I'm hoping maybe if just one of you uh, guys learns the lesson the easy way from me, the video was worth it. So uh, you guys have fun, turn safe, and uh, hopefully I can. Uh, next video I put up will be the actual review of this uh, grizzly lathe. You you folks have a good day. Thank you.